Okay, now it is time for us to get our hands on with the demo project and toolkit itself. And um, in the upcoming video sections, I'm going to walk you through um, the entire demo project, uh, all departments from start to finish. And it's about seven shots and a couple of assets. And um, it will be to be able to do it in the time we have. Uh, a lot of things will be fairly simplified or, or pre-made and stuff like that. Uh, but um, the goal is to, to show you how the entire process is done. And uh, I'll throw in some curveballs as well and show you different ways of handling things. Now, so along uh, with these uh, videos that you're watching, uh, there should be download links uh, available for uh, the demo project and toolkit. And um, once you have downloaded that, you can unzip it. And uh, you can unzip it anywhere. I have uh, sort of uh, unzipped it here to, um, to my documents folder. And uh, what you will find are these uh, two things. So you will find the demo project itself. And um, this demo project, the toolkit automatically creates a project for you uh, when you work. And it has to do that uh, in order to save things and stuff like that. And um, it, it will always be this same structure. And so uh, you can also connect it to a previous project, of course, which is what we're going to do with this demo project. But to walk you through these uh, folders and, and what they are, um, first, there is the assembly folder. And uh, because this is a, a multi-shot toolkit, um, the idea is that you use one work file and work on many things at once, and then you export those to the shots. And so you wouldn't normally have um, a file per shot, uh, a work file per shot. And so you need somewhere to save these work files. And so that's where this assembly folder comes in. So you can save there. You can also save externally wherever you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter, um, but it's a place to, to organize things. And um, when you save there, there will be a lot of uh, you know, extra files with your work files, um, sort of with the gallery uh, folder and stuff like that. So it, it makes sense to, to have it somewhere um, organized. Now, uh, we do have an asset folder. Uh, by default, it will just contain a sandbox asset. Um, so uh, at least there will be something if, if you don't have anything you can play around with, right? Um, we have shots um, and the shots, this folder will be empty by default. Um, I have added uh, a bunch of shots here with uh, for the demo project. And uh, these shots and assets, they can be created with the toolkit itself, uh, which we're going to do. Um, and once um, a shot or asset is created, um, you will get this uh, thumbnail folder uh, that is being used with the toolkit. Um, when you create it, your, um, you can add a thumbnail right away, or you can drop it in here later if you want to. If, um, if you have plates, uh, you can drop them into the plate folder, and uh, it's just a sequence of images, basically. And um, these uh, plates, they can be named whatever you want. Uh, but it should be in a sequential order and preferably start at 1001, which is the sort of industry standard for, um, for frame ranges. And uh, if there is no thumbnail, um, the, the system will use the, the plate as a thumbnail as well. And um, so I have named these like a little bit descriptive to tell them apart. Um, but you'll also notice that these shots are named um, in, a, in a special way. And uh, this is also sort of industry standard. Uh, the idea is that you don't want to name them one, two, three, or whatever, um, because um, if you want to slot a shot in between these, um, you can't. So if it's called 10, then you know you can always create a shot that is called 15 in between these two. Um, so it's a good good practice. But you can name these uh, whatever you want. Um, we have a transfer folder, and this is also pretty standard for production in VFX. Um, so this is the folder where uh, you where everything goes that is not created by the system itself. So in your in folder, this is where you uh, would um, uh, place things that are coming from maybe other softwares being exported from other software, from Substance, or um, you know uh, from scans, or from uh, another from tracking, outsourcing, uh, what have you, or stuff you downloaded from TurboSquid. Um, then you place them here, and then you can sort of ingest them properly later on. Uh, the out folder is uh, where you place things that you do want to send to other uh, people, perhaps, or the client, or whatever. Um, you have the ref folder, which is also empty. It's um, a collect <laughs> a free for all uh, folder where you can just place things, uh, refer Im uh, reference images and ideas, and uh, what have you. And lastly, we have the utility folder, and this has a uh, configuration, and this is where sort of uh, temp thumbnails are being stored and stuff like that. Uh, the OTL um, is um, this is where you can place uh, HDAs that um, you want to use in the project. So we have a, a demo rig here 
uh, for instance. All right, so that's uh, an overview of how the, the project uh, looks. Now we are going to dig into the toolkit. And so in the toolkit folder, uh, you will find uh, the, uh, the five uh, HDAs that we're going to install. Uh, there are several ways to install HDAs. Um, you can place them in different uh, folder uh, paths that Houdini is looking for, and it will have different results. So uh, in some paths, it will be available just to you or, or your uh, project. In other places, it will be available always for all projects. You can place them so they're available for your network and stuff like that. But we are going to do the most simple one. So if we jump over here into Solaris, we are going to go to File, Import, and uh, we are going to select Houdini Digital Asset. And um, we're going to press this Browse button here, and um, you will navigate to your folder if you haven't already. And um, we'll just select all of those. Um, and um, you have the option now to uh, install this just to the current file, uh, or you can pick it scanned asset libraries. And the difference is if, if it's only this file, and then, um, then it won't be present for the next time you open Houdini, whereas with scanned asset libraries, you, uh, it will always be present. So if you just want to test it out, uh, current fi HIP file makes sense. And for the purpose of this demo, we're going to stay in the same file as well. Uh, now, I have already installed mine, so I'm not going to install them again here. Um, but once you're happy, you click the install button. All right, so once we have installed that, uh, we can do our tab menu and you should see old and gray menu show up here, uh, which is my Patreon and my company. And uh, we have the uh, gray light uh, nodes here. And uh, we also have this demo rig um, that I will show you how to install later on. All right, so first of all, we put down our base node here. Uh, everything should be grayed out in the attributes. And so what we need to do is set the project. And uh, we do this by browsing and um, you navigate to your documents folder and this example download uh, folder uh, that we have. And then you uh, click into this uh, demo project and press accept. And so this path should now be uh, documents and your uh, demo project. Uh, if you're happy with that, you press set project. And so now it connects to that folder. Um, of course, you could also create a new folder. Um, but for this purpose, we, we need the demo project folder. And once you press that, you, it will offer you if you want to save this file into the assembly folder. And so it will give you a preview here for what the file name is going to be. And it will version it for you. Um, and so if you have crashes and stuff like that, um, and you open, for example, a, a backup file, uh, if you press set project again, it will offer you to do this again. And uh, then it will sort of remove every uh, mention of, of backup in the, in the file name and, and try to version up. Um, you are not required to save this into that folder. And uh, you can name this as well, whatever you want. Uh, for example, uh, assets or um, layout or light or whatever you want. Uh, I have already saved this, so I'm going to skip. Uh, and we are going to uh, dive into all of these uh, throughout uh, as we go along. Um, but uh, one thing that can be good to know is how the template works. Um, so by default, it's very nice to uh, be able to create the template. And uh, when you press, it will create this uh, skeleton for you. And um, you can adjust how many of these uh, uh, sort of uh, columns you want in it. So each of these contexts here will be uh, sort of one, uh, one uh, context that you want to work on, for instance. Um, you also have, um, you can also add um, more to this. Uh, if you um, add more, uh, then it will uh, try to add more uh, to it. Uh, sometimes you, um, uh, you don't need that. Sometimes you, um, um, let's go back to three here. Um, sometimes if you're doing layout and stuff, you want cameras. And um, adding the cameras is pretty important um, because we are using uh, background images, if you create an image normally, or a camera normally, um, the background image will actually be overridden by this uh, background slot. And so we don't want that. So um, I highly recommend that if you're using cameras, uh, just click this add cameras. Uh, uh, sometimes you uh, don't want these uh, contexts to be created and add things as you go. And in that case, you can also uncheck these and, uh, and create, and then you will sort of get these uh, placeholders instead and um, you can connect things manually as you go. As you, go. Uh, you also have vert vertical spacing if you need uh, more space uh, to work on. 
So uh, with that, uh, we are going to jump in to the next section.